Welcome back to my third video uh, on this same example of grading an enemy and signing that enemy some statistics. If you didn't watch the first two videos, you probably aren't going to follow what's going along too well. I toyed with the idea of trying to explain everything again, but I'm not going to. So if you want to see how we got to this point, uh, go back, watch the last two videos. So what we've got is a form, user enters their level, and then the form generates an enemy. All right, that enemy has a random speed and a random strength. The strength is dependent on the player's level. And like I said, if you wanna see how that happened, uh, go back and watch the other videos, please. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna create another function and uh, presumably an enemy would have a lot of different variables. I'm just gonna do speed and strength. Um, we could get as carried away as we'd like, but the next function that I wanna write is a pretty common function and, it and it's used in a lot of different contexts. We're gonna talk about toString. So I'm gonna use the toString function to generate basically a debugging sentence. And that sentence is gonna be something to the effect of this enemy has a strength of something and this enemy has a speed of something. So rather than have to do this whole deal I've been doing with a message box, over and over again, and it's really only capable of displaying one variable at a time. I'm just going to generate a string. So I'm going to write that function down here, and I'm going to call it toString. All right, and so now we have to put a little thought into this. So I think I explained what my toString function was going to do. So is it going to have any parameters? I think it's going to have two parameters. It's going to have speed and it's going to have strength. And so I'm going to call those speed as integer and strength as integer. And so what's it going to return? Well, the name of the function kind of implies that it's going to return a string. So I'm going to have it return a string. This is a little bit interesting because we've got now we've got a string or a, a function which takes integers and returns a string. And since these are introductory videos, I think a lot of people get hung up on the idea that the return type is always going to agree with the parameters. And honestly, I'm sure people also get pretty hung up on the idea of, well, what do these even have to do with anything? So I like this one because it returns a string, but uh, you pass it integers. Notice that I've got this green underline and I get a message saying something about two string overrides a message um, or a function. What that means is that the two string function already exists and I'm replacing it. And so I will talk about overriding functions in a, in a video a couple down the road. But for now, just know that that means there's already something called two string and I can and I can create my own two string function and I will just know that it already existed and I'm replacing it with whatever I write here. So what this does isn't very complicated. It's just a single line. It's going to return a string. The string's gonna be something like, this enemy has strength of, concatenate my variable that's representing strength is str, concatenate um, the speed. Sorry, I can't do this really fast. I actually have to think about what I'm doing. Uh, so speed is, the variable's name is right here, which is spd. And I think that is the string that I want to return. So there's this idea that I'm going to pass it speed, I'm going to pass it strength, and it's going to give me this sentence back. So how I'm going to use that, notice I've created this function, but I never called it anywhere. And you can have all the functions in the world, but if you never call those functions, well, they're kind of worthless. So rather than just print out the strength, I'm going to go message box show, and I'm going to call the to string function. And the two string function is expecting two arguments, right? And those arguments are integers. And in this case, uh, the first thing it's expecting, and notice that order does matter here. So type and order. It's expecting two integers and it's expecting the speed first and the strength second. So my speed is called speed and strength is called strength. And so that's how I reference this function. So I call right here to here. And so I'm passing information from here to here. And this thing's going to return a string. Notice that I got rid of the C string right here because it already is a string, right? It returns a string. So that's, this works. So let's give it a test run and see if it does what it's supposed to do. So if I'm on level 10, because if this enemy has a strength of 57, the speed is 18. I don't know, maybe those are reasonable values. 
They're random, that's good. Uh, strength is higher than speed, I think that's good. It seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. And so, the thing that I do want to show you with this, so I'm kind of going to make a mistake here, but maybe we'll be able to learn something from it. Let's switch these around. Let's pass strength and speed. All right, and let's see how this works. Notice it doesn't throw any errors. All right, and it is agreeable because these are both, it's passing two integers and it expects two integers. So that's good. Uh, this should be pretty apparent if I do like a level 100 character. I get a strength of 11 and a speed of 690. That's not the way I wrote this, right? Our speeds were relatively low and our strengths are the things that are supposed to get really high. So what happened? Well, I passed it two integers. Order matters, and that's one of the more difficult things to understand uh, when you're new to this concept. So I passed it strength and I passed it speed. This down here does not care. Notice that speed is kind of like, right? Speed, it's an abbreviation but uh, it doesn't care. Order is the only thing that matters. Whatever I pass it first is now going to be called speed. And what I call it, what I pass it second is now going to be called str. So really, I, it, the order that I pass them is definitely important. Uh, sorry, strength. I forget what I'm doing sometimes. And so that is what I wanted it to do. So other ways I could fix that is I could completely rewrite the error message just based on the instance, or I could switch the order of the variables, but those aren't great solutions. The correct way to use this is you need to understand your functions. So what are the parameters of your functions? What's the type and what's the order? And what does it return? All right, if you understand those three things about a function, then you can write a function. Now, I had intended to just do three videos because these are kind of lengthy, but I'm going to do one more. And in the next one, I'm going to improve this example a little bit, just make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm also going to start poking around subs a little bit. Functions and subs are very similar. Just the, the difference is that a function returns something and a sub returns nothing. So in my next example, we're going to improve this just a little bit. And I'm going to start introducing subs. So if you're interested in that, I will see you shortly. Thanks for watching.